So yes, good morning from Townsville in Australia. Um, if anyone's been to the Great Barrier Reef, you probably know where I am. So uh, yeah, near the top of Australia there. If you're wondering, Sophie, we have two kinds of weather here, hot and really hot. So today it was just hot, so that was nice. So um, yes, I would like to talk about a uh, review of lie detection um, textbooks of um, criminal justice textbooks, really, that I did with a colleague of mine, Dr. Turley. She's a senior lecturer in criminology based in Brisbane. And yeah, I'm here in Townsville and I teach a first year class in forensic, forensic psychology. Um, my PhD was awarded last September, so I'm a newbie. So I became interested in uh, nonverbal behaviour and lie detection by concerns I had. So I read the Global Deception Research Team studies uh, where they found that gaze aversion is the most common lie detection method, it seems, worldwide. I read about police interviewing and interrogation, uh, read some of the read technique books and uh, quickly realised that um, there's very little difference between how lay people detect lies and how uh, police do, and uh, which wouldn't matter if it worked, but as you all know, nonverbal behaviour is, um, is not a good lie detection method. And I was particularly concerned about the gaze aversion because in Australia here, when you look at, uh, when I looked at the Queensland Health website, so our state government run uh, health website, and it was talking about communicating effectively with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. So here in Townsville, where I am in Australia, where it's about 3.8% of the population, uh, Indigenous, Australian, Indigenous Australians or Torres Strait Islanders, here in Townsville, it's 9%. So now about communicating effectively with our First Nations people, the Queensland Health Team said, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, avoidance of eye contact is customarily a gesture of respect. In Western society, averting gaze can be viewed as being dishonest, rude, or showing lack of interest. Some, but not all, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people may, therefore, be uncomfortable with direct eye contact, especially if unfamiliar, and to make direct eye contact can be viewed as being rude, dis disrespectful, or even aggressive. So they advised to convey polite respect. The appropriate approach would be to avert or lower your eyes in conversation. So this concerned me deeply. So when you look at Australian police and lie detection methods, now the read technique was used in the past, but uh, law enforcers now are supposed to follow the UK model, the peace interviewing model. And many years ago, decades ago in Australia, there were um, committees and advisory boards that were set up, they're established to ensure that Australian police training is based on scientific research. So there is a real, I was saying to Sophie before we started, there's just, there's just hardly any lie detection research in Australia and there is very little research with Australian law enforcers. Um, and looking at what they are taught, a conversation that I had uh, with someone from, there's a police academy here in Townsville, concerned me greatly because they said they don't uh, teach lie detection there, but they learn it on the job, the behavioral analysis interview, that it's not supposed to be taught. So I did um, looked at the little bit that we had here and it indicated that fallible lie detection methods had not been eliminated here. So um, a former supervisor from the UK, Stephen Mostyn, did some research um, and he actually had the Australian Federal Police Interviewing Manual, <laughs> which he let me read. And this is what it said in this 2018 manual. 
it is very difficult to look someone straight in the eye when you are lying. When you were a child, were you ever told by your parents or a teacher to look me straight in the eye and tell me you didn't do it? Um, now, they did say in their manual that uh, in some cultures, avoiding eye contact is a sign of respect. However, the cultural group they talked about in their training manual was uh, Chinese people, Indigenous Australians weren't mentioned. And this manual uh, seems to have been written in the UK, not here. So yes, uh, Stephen Mostyn, who was a former uh, PhD supervisor for a while while he was here at the uni, um, he did some research and they surveyed 2,769 Queensland police officers about their interviewing training. They also asked them about detecting deception. So while overall these officers were, like, were, were quite unsatisfied with their training, most of them, a lot of them said that they hadn't had any interviewing training post the police academy, um, they were very confident they could detect deception. So 95% of detectives. Um, and this floored me. So their most preferred lie detection technique was observing nonverbal behavior and this was favoured over available evidence. I know I've only got 15 minutes, but this was favoured over available evidence. I couldn't believe it. And Hill and Mostyn said that the Queensland officers, uh, you know, some of them, I would argue uh, quite a lot of them, were using questioning tactics that were ineffective and potentially harmful. And many held inaccurate views regarding the likely behaviour of liars. So as, as your good people all know, I see all these names here of all the people that I have um, referenced <laughs> in my PhD. Um, the lie detection methods, they have, they have to be, um, well, they should be infallible because if they're not, um, the outcome can be, you know, wrongful convictions. And when you look at our indigenous populations, they are way overrepresented. Um, in the criminal justice system. So it was really, really concerning. So looking at reviews of interviewing and interrogation training overseas, particularly in the US, and a review of criminal justice textbook, textbooks that, were do, that was done by King and Dunn, they showed also, they looked at 21 um, English language textbooks, King and Dunn, and 18 of them discussed um, deception detection. Some of them, you know, a lot of them were endorsing nonverbal lie detection techniques that don't work. With gaze aversion, some were saying, um, you know, gay, averting your gaze is in, indicative of lying. Others were saying, you know, holding gaze for longer. Um, but um, yeah, so I looked at that and and thought about how important it is that myths about um, the behaviour of liars should be addressed. For those, uh, since Australia's really, really pushed for higher education for police officers. So um, we were interested, Emma and I, in what uh, criminal justice students are taught about um, lie detection, but there was nothing out there. So we decided that we would look. So uh, we went to the Queensland Government Education website, uh, looked at a list of Queensland based universities, and then searched for undergraduate degrees in criminology or criminal justice. So of the 11 universities in our state, Eight offered undergraduate degrees uh, marketed at those seeking a career in the criminal justice system. So we did uh, uh, library searches online and in person. So I'm in the north and Emma's in the south of the state. Uh, we looked at all the course profiles for each core and elective class. Uh, and we searched for anything with a focus on deception or lie detection in any of these units. We sourced the required textbooks yeah, via the uh, university's library and we reviewed them for lying and lie detection information. So the index of each textbook we went through, searched for their keywords, lie, lie detection, deception. 
if they contained information about those keywords, this section of the book was read. We then cross-checked it with the course profile to identify if that chapter was assigned as required or recommended reading. And we also looked at our peak, um, criminology body, the Australian Institute of Criminology. We contacted them about Australian-based criminology textbooks. And we also looked at their research publication database um, for publications using the keywords lie detection, deception, detection, and or nonverbal behavior. So uh, this picture here that I found looked like my son. My, I dragged my youngest son. They make really good RAs because there were a lot of books uh, that we had to go through. So. Um, the Australian Institute of Criminology uh, showed that six Australian focused criminology textbooks had been published over the past decade. There were 191 course profiles that we read and the required textbooks was, were sourced. So with one in one degree, they didn't have, they didn't have, um, it wasn't, you had to be a student and signed in to get their, their, their book list. So what we did instead was went to their library and went to their um, online bookshop and looked up any book that had anything to do with criminology and criminal justice. So um, uh, four of the online um, textbooks, because we assumed that they would have to stop them if they were using them, they weren't available at that library. So, you know, we assumed that they weren't because we have to stop textbooks in our library if students need to use them. Um, so yeah, we didn't uh, include those. Uh, five of the textbooks couldn't be located anywhere. And so maybe they were changing it, we weren't sure, but there were a total of 95 textbooks that we reviewed. So none of the course profiles for these criminology units indicated lie detection would be discussed. And most of the text did not include information about lie detection. So in the article, I explain how one forensic psychology unit at one university addressed lie detection. That's our university and that's me that talks about it. So our forensic psychology unit here, there's not a lot of them in Australia. Uh, it was started about six years ago. And that's been me talking into that um, with my other supervisor who started it. So it's at our uni that we talk about it. Now, but there was one criminal justice unit at another uni that was um, in the, um, down in Brisbane. And it actually addressed police interviewing, indigenous Australians and nonverbal behavior. So both of these units, present current evidence. But from the 95 textbooks we reviewed, seven discussed deception detection and only four highlighted the fallibility of reliance on nonverbal uh, cues, referred to cultural differences and cautioned against this uncritical acceptance of notions that police are skilled, are more skilled than the public at detecting lies. Three of the textbooks, indicated that nonverbal behavior uh, could be used to detect lying. Um, one, one said that police had used um, fallible methods. So we're talking about like the polygraph, but then that they also indicated that, that nonverbal behavior could be used. So um, that was a bit of a, a mix, but it was really interesting that several of the police focused textbooks didn't address the topic at all. And one that was just about ethics didn't address it at all. So, and this was really surprising too. The Australian Government uh, Institute of Criminology Search did not find any publications on lie detection, nonverbal behaviour or deception, none. Um, so, yeah, this was, um, talk about limitations one of the limitations i don't have in here is that we only looked at queensland universities uh, which not the entirety of australia but when you look at the king and dunn review they found 21 textbooks we we look through 95 so there's a good chance that the other universities do use these textbooks but 
because the textbooks didn't address lie detection methods, we just looked at the course profiles, reviewed readings, what they were going to be talk about. It doesn't mean that it wasn't discussed. So we emailed um, lecturers at these uh, universities and four of them responded and said, no, they don't, never have. And one of them said, oh, maybe we should. So, as I said, it's, it's really concerning what's happening here. It looks like the, the, um, the Hill and Mostyn study was in uh, 2011, so it was a while back. But, I, and, and we were supposed to have changed from 1990, but I read research that said in Western Australia, they didn't actually transition to the peace model till 2009. And the indicators are that interviewing training perhaps isn't ongoing and people are learning on the job. Um, so it, it looks like that nonverbal behaviour is being used in Australia, if only unofficially. So, and it also looks like that our, our criminal justice, our future criminal justice practitioners are not being taught anything uh, really about lie detection. So this is very much going to uh, lead into people making incorrect assumptions of guilt. It would lead to a lie bias against our Indigenous Australians. And I've read research about people from collectivist cultures that can also think that, you know, averting your gaze is a sign of respect. We have a, a very large number of people in this country from that were born in other countries and from a very you know diverse cultural population. So we really thought it's very important that Australian educational institutions, if they are focusing on training future criminal justice practitioners, they really should be talking about it. And they really should be explaining how um, nonverbal behaviour is not a good lie detection method and talking about how police training and these myths that we have about um, the likely behaviour of someone that's lying, um, you know, they're the same. Police are probably doing the same thing that when we're, we're maybe doing ourselves anyway. So it needs to be trained out, not reinforced by going um, into the profession and having people say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So I love the sound of my own voice. I hope I haven't gone over too much. But um, thank you for listening and thank you for inviting me.